Now, our next guest we have is Eddie. He's going to come in. Um, Eddie, you want to unmute your mic? And there you are. Okay. How you doing? <laughs> Great. Now, now where, where, where are you um, um, based out of? Oh, I'm based in UK, in Cornwall, exactly. Uh, I'm French originary. I immigrated uh, eight years ago. I had a shop in St. Ives in Cornwall, but uh, with a pandemic, uh, etc., the Brexit, etc., I shut it. And uh, now I'm a full, uh, full landscape, full landscape photographer. Oh, great, great! I, now, what type of photography do you enjoy most? Ah, uh, the seascape. The seascape is the most uh, purpose of photography I love because. Uh, I do not know. I do not know to explain why, why because when I saw the sea, you know, it's a, it's a sort of poesy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> on the cliff too, the cliffs. It's a nice, uh, nice things too. Uh, I like uh, the countryside too, because in UK you have a lot of countryside, especially in Cornwall. It's a good uh, purpose for the photography of landscape. That's why I choose this, uh, this type of photography. Well, that's great. See, here in Florida, everything is flat. Yeah. We don't have cliffs. We don't have, cliffs, you, don't have <laughs> you, know, you look out the ocean, you just see the ocean. With a lot of your, your images, you have rocks in the images. You have these beautiful landscapes. Um, and what's great about that is you're sharing that with the world. In this area, you have a lot of geology. You know, you have a big rock with uh, some detail, a texture, etc. Yes, it's really amazing. In fact, when uh, I came to Cornwall for the first time, I was uh, impressed by the landscapes. Because in each area you can go uh, to Cornwall, you can imagine you are in the Los Angeles, uh, in uh, another part in the world, except, bit, except of course for the climate. It's a little bit, um, it's like, in fact, you know, in Florida, you, are, um, you have a tropical climate. You know, but for the, in the UK, it's some temperature below, you know, a little bit below uh, at the RFB, uh, 20 uh, degrees, some tip, something like that. Great. So now how do you use Lumen? What, what's your um, what's your purpose that you need Luminar for? Oh, Luminar, I love it because it's for the creative process, you know, because uh, I like it for a long time. I will explain when I use Luminar. It was for the purpose of my shop. My Lightroom and Photoshop were done, and I need a software faster to do my uh, fridge magnet because it was at this time I do uh, at that time I was doing some fridge magnets, some prints, etc. And uh, I need I need I needed some uh, a software, a quick software to do the things faster, and with. Uh, Enhance AI, you know, the, the same cursors, uh, the uh, other things, etc. It was a proper way to do my things very properly. And uh, right. it, finally, Luminar saved my life at, uh, <laughs> yes, exactly, at the, um, at the moment of my time when I did it to, to, to print my, uh, my work, in fact. Oh, great. Oh, well, hey, how about you share your screen? Yes, of course, okay. yeah. I will show you something. I will show you exactly the application, Luminar. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yeah, let, there we go. Full screen now. Yep, we're set. Okay, fantastic. Uh, okay, I will move these things there. Okay. Okay, if this is a picture from a seascape uh, near from my area, you know, and uh, it's in near Griffian, exactly. And I would, I would, I would like to show you uh, when uh, I would like to show you the process of this image, in fact. So I will go, I will start to enhance the image with the accent, you know, a little bit like this. And I will go directly with a composition at 16 by 9. Up, something like that. Okay. I recrop just a little bit like this, and we keep only this area, you know, a bit like this. Up, enter. That's good. And I will play with a light tool. And we play with the temperature to go to this type of color, you know. And after that, I will go directly on the super contrast. And I re up up these three sliders. I will put a little bit of contrast in the highlight. 
in the mid turn and in the shadow. Just a little bit like this. Next, I will go to the color harmony to put some brilliance, just like this, some warmth. Okay, nice. just like this. And after that, uh, I will remove these things. I can adjust with a template edited like this, you know, to find the way if it's over processed, you know, like this or a little bit like this, but I like the style like this. And after that, I would like to inject some mood in the picture. So I will use uh, mm -hmm, direct, directly in the creative, uh, the glow like this. Yes, and this is the before and the after, you know. It's really nice like this, but I think it's a little bit too much. Yeah, good things. And I like to use the atmosphere too with the A's, just like this, the first thing. I realize the depth a little bit like this. Let me remove a little bit of glow. I like to use both of them, you know, and just like this. And this is the before and the after. A slight difference, but it's enough. And uh, I will go forward with another picture. Now, what I like what you did there is you did this subtle edit to where it's still a photograph. It's still photography. And I'm sure that's how you saw it when, when you first took that photo. Yeah. So and I, uh, a lot. I will go to the next. Good directly to edit model two. Okay. I will do the same. I always put the histogram just in this uh, area to to see what's happened with my pictures. I know I saw in the mid turns I, I have a little gap, you know. So with the accent, you know, you when you when you see the histogram, the little gap is like this, but I can use the light tool too to do an extra shadow like this and put very light just like this and just go down to the super contrast again. Oops, oops. I put a little bit of contrast just there. And I think, yeah, there is something who annoyed me in the composition. So, oops. I uh, will go on the five seven, it will be better. Yeah, good. I uh, will go just this thing, should be good. Okay, that's good enough. For this time, I will, I will use the landscape with a golden hour. Okay, just a bit like this. But with the DI tool. And I saw uh, something very, very, very annoying just there. And up, I raise this. Okay. And after that, and I will go to the color harmony, a little bit of brilliance. I will go to the color balance. The shadow, I will inject a little blue. Yeah, like this. So right now you're using color harmony? Some... Yeah. Gotcha, so, so you're pinpointing your highlights and your shadows. Yeah. And after that, I'm going to do something because you know it's a little bit too strong, but I can do something very interesting there before playing with the color, HSL. Uh, I will target the green area with, uh, yes, with the U to get a yellowish color. And I will desaturate a little bit like this. Okay. And put a little bit of vibrance. Vibrance, sorry. Okay. Ah, oh, that's better, you know. Up. And if I go with a before and the after, a quick edit, you know. Nice. 
I like these pictures because you you know you have another photographer just there, and look at that. This is a small <laughs> compared to the cliff. It's amazing. Yeah, this is a, a picture from the North Cliff uh, exactly to from Cornwall too. Oh, and, right. and so you, I notice you like you like taking your edits from a traditional standpoint. Um, you like to dive right in and make changes. Um, do you do you save your changes as templates? Or do you like starting fresh each time? Oh, you know, uh, sometimes I do some templates, but really, uh, really, uh, actually, sorry, actually, I do. Uh, I, I have a picture and play around with a picture just like this. I start with an uh, interface. So I have no, uh, no really need to use the templates, you know, uh, in my way, you know. But I think the templates is a good thing is, uh, if uh, somebody would like a, a good starting point uh, quick, quickly, you know. Gotcha. Okay. Especially if you're learning, if you're just starting out with edit, editing, much like your camera. When you first start out with a camera, you put it in auto mode, take the picture and see what the camera recommended and then set the camera in manual and dial in those settings. So that, that's how I approach templates is it gives you that creativity and a good starting point. Yes, it should be a good starting point too. But the way I process the pictures in the, in the field, I put all in manual, you know, but I just playing with um, uh, the exposure, just the exposure, you know, in the, in the, on the camera. And I, and I uh, what can I do with that? I put all my settings, you know, my, uh, my F-stop, my, um, I, I try to trans translate in English, you know, because originally I'm French, so I always say the, the, the terms is French with my community. So, uh, yeah, I, I put all my settings in uh, manual mode, but I just playing with the... Um, ah. I, I will say you I will say you later. <laughs> Okay, I will uh, process this image from God Revy now. It's another area from Cornwall. Gotcha. Always the same process, you know, with the accent. I just have a look on the histogram, just like this, with a distribution. A lot of information in the shadows, uh, in the highlight. For, in the highlight, you know, it's uh, darker because uh, of the scene of this area. So I will go to the composition too, and there I will go on the composition AI. No, I will not go this way. I will take another 16 by nine, yeah. Okay, just like this, up. Should be good. I cut a little bit this cloud, no? Okay, good. I will put a little bit of the temperature. An ejection of Manjata, yeah, should be good. But for this time, I will open a little bit of shadow, yeah, to reveal this type of things. That's a good thing. Okay, I will add some structure. A bit like this, and maybe now with the structure AI. Did you like how that? Um... Uh, it actually attacks the background. So if there were people in the scene, it's human aware to it knows, oh, that's the skin. We're not going to affect the skin. We're only going to affect the subject around it. Um, that, when it first came out, I could not believe, you know, the, the impact on it. As a portrait photographer, photographing yes. somebody in a, a scene like this and it it's really a enhanced the scene. And it's a great thing because you know the, the foreground here is very nice with a structure. But you look at the cloud. If I do the before and the after, you have a set of things on the cloud, but it's not far. It's not uh, uh, what can I do with that? Uh, uh, it's not overdone, you know. Here it's okay, but here you know it's smooth. And if you want to smooth these things, I well, I finishing with these things with uh, atmosphere. You know, I like it because you can add some 
something seems fair in, inside and i can Ooh, nice. play with a death you know and i maybe play with a lightness i should be good oops before and after i can do things things and after that i can add some drama yes i like the dramatic looks too Oop, a little bit a bit like this and with the color i will desaturate a little bit too now where was this taken by the way sorry where, where was this image taken the moods uh, when, when, when did you take well where, where was this photo location? oh good good ruby in cornwall gotcha. it's next it's uh, next to my uh, it's my uh, it's in my local area in fact uh, it's uh, 15 minutes words from my house. Oh, wow. So, uh, yes, I have beautiful things there. I'm lucky for that. I have to say, Vanelli, his and, beaches uh, are prettier than your beaches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, hear that? You, said, you said your beaches are prettier than my beaches. <laughs> and this is the before and the after. You know, I changed the look from the, the start. It was a little bit like this. And I put a little gray things. And with a super contrast, I can change things in the shadow, maybe. Oops. A little bit like this. The mid tones. And in very lights. OK. It's a pretty cool like this. I like it. OK. I think it's enough for this one. Maybe, ah, uh, no, maybe something else. Yeah, the dodge and burn. Give a strength like this. Okay, let's play a little bit. For the information, this is an iMac 2012. So it's uh, an old mic for this uh, this demo today. Good. So now, right now, um, what's the purpose of what what you're doing? You're dodging and burning. Dodge and burning, and the on same area, you know. So you're trying to draw the viewer through the scene. Uh, I try to put some, you know, uh, light on some area just like this, you know on this area too, and I will darken some area too to go to do uh, some relief. Oh, it's, uh, it's too strong, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will restart, Up. Sorry about that. No problem. Yeah, I find when I do that, I'll go to the history and step back one or control Z. Yeah, exactly. And it can uh, be useful uh, if you have, a, we haven't uh, virtual copies in um, in Lumina, but we can use the story like a virtual copy. If you, if, we, if we want to go to this area, for example, and restart uh, the process, you can do it. You can go forward or do another things, etc. So no need to virtual copies. I do not need it, in fact. Gotcha. Token, so here you go. At 15. Now, you know, it's, it's interesting when we were um, on the internet the other day, some gentleman, someone made a comment about, um, he was upset that I made, I, I made a comment about Luminar being quick to edit, you're in, you get out, don't spend all day editing an image. And he brought out a great point and said, but what if we love doing that? What if our hobby is editing? What if I enjoy editing just as much as I love taking the photo, that yeah. opened my eyes. No, that that I, opened my eyes to a whole new. Because in, in my line with, with portraiture, I need to get in quick, get out quick. If I have seventy people in front of me, I want to get that done in seconds, not days. Yes, exactly. And this is the point because I use a lot of software, you know, uh, of the companies, etc. And I think that Rumina. Uh, I, I follow the Luminar since the Luminar 2018, yeah? 
at the, the correct uh, date. And for the speed editing, I think it's the best one, the best one. No other software can edit a photo like this speed, you know? You know, it's, it's really funny because I use the un, uh, only the tools, you know, in the edition mode. But even with the tools, you can do quickly the things because you have the essential with there, yeah. the creative, portrait, for professional. So when you try to find something, it's easy to find, in fact. Yeah. And, and, and again, I keep reiterating to people, when, when I first started photography, Photoshop was the tool. So imagine trying to juggle a complicated program and trying to learn photography at the same time. That was rough. Whereas when Luminar comes into the play, I really love the fact that you could focus on one or the other. You know, I want to focus on being a photographer, take all my images. Now I have quick edits I can do. Uh, Mike brought out a point in the, um, in the chat. He says, you love the question that we talked about how everyone wants to do it fast. He likes to play and make that part of his process. Um, and again, that, that's the artistic side of us. Yes. And in fact, uh, you know, uh, it's very interesting for the professional side because when you have several prints to be delivered at a time, you have to do quickly the edits. You cannot uh, spend your time to do the edit uh, on, uh, I do not know, uh, 20, uh, half an hour for an image, etc. You have to do it quickly. So for the professional side, it's very perfect. And for the other side, for the creativity, if you want to spend a little bit of time on, the, on Luminar, it's okay too. But it's really quick. And I think you did a great piece of software. After two years, I use this software. I can tell you, uh, I'm very, very, this software blew my mind, in fact. So congratulations to the Skyloom team. Congratulations. Hey, real quick, um, a comment was asked, how did you show the histogram? Did you show me what the histogram tool is? Oh, the histogram, just uh, by the right click, and you, can, you, you, you just have to click on the show histogram, just like this. And, and in this new update, the histogram stays where it's at until you hide it again. And yes, of course, you can hide it just like this. But, you know, I prefer keep the histogram in my eyes because uh, the histogram is like a guide, you know? It's not the exact science. I know uh, well, you can uh, you can uh, you can not display the histogram and play with a cursor, etc., and go the, in the creative way. But I like it because when I go to the super contrast, I can uh, you know just see when my histogram go. You know, if I want to uh, go by this way, sorry, on the shadow contrast. That's what I wanted to do. If I want to go further, I see that the histogram just go in the point, in the black point, you know. If I think it's too far, I can go in this area and I say, yeah, it's okay. And look at my picture and so that's done. But uh, yeah, the histogram is a great tool for me and I like it. But no, I can, I, I can, uh... hello? I noticed you, you like the 16 by 9 ratio. Yes, exactly. For, for this type of picture, oh, I have a, uh, something like, I will remove it after. Uh, I like this 16 by 9 for the landscape. But sometimes I can do it on the vertical mode. And I can use on the, um, uh, let me show you even another picture, maybe oh, this one. I can change my mind. I can do it on the 16 by 9 for this one, for example. But on these pictures, OK, let's do it a little bit of sentence. I will put this ratio on the 5 by 7, you know, something like that. To crop a little bit like this, to keep this area just like that. You know, I like this uh, type of uh, framing too. Uh, this, the one by one is okay too. Uh, but most of the time I use the 16 by nine to keep, you know, uh, I don't know, I, I would like to explain you something about the 16 by nine. It's uh, fill the frame, you know, when you are in the, 
when you are looking on the social media, when you put a picture like this on 16 by 9, boom, it's on, it's a fill the frame, and it's very pleasant to to look at this, to look at the pictures like that, like that. Yeah, I'm falling in love with the 16 by 9 ratio. Um, yeah, I just, I just, that's a great thing. Good. You know, it looks good on print you know, when you're printing it. It's different. I, I, I think that's the reason why I'm falling in love with it again, because it's different than what you're used to doing. And again, yeah. when you're using digital, you know, media, when you're showing it on um, a different medium, you'll see that full frame, and it just looks really nice. And it's like it's very nice for 16 by 9 even in the, in a fridge magnet you know when you have a fridge magnet you can update the things you have uh, some uh, 16 by 9 now and it's very pleasant to see that in the in the this type or this type of d -band, in fact awesome all right just real quick um harvey asked he noticed the photo started out very dark um, is there a purpose to start dark or any advantages Ah, yes, to start dark, yeah. In fact, when you are with your camera, you have to check your histogram. I will give you a little tips like this. If you have uh, an histogram, you know, who start just like this, but when you have something, you know, ah, I just click on this, like this, you know, but not near the black point to avoid the noise, you know, just at this start, you can keep all the information. And sometimes you have some highlights. And to protect the highlights, I used to underexpose my picture because of the dynamic range of the camera. Here, for example, is some pictures of Rafi, yes, for my Fuji. You know, you know uh, Fuji X-T2. Before, I had a full-frame camera. So for the dynamic range of full-frame, the biggest, the biggest uh, dynamic range. but a crop sensor, honestly, you can do a lot of things. You are not annoying with uh, with uh, things. I underexpose a little bit, and I use uh, the native ISO of the camera, just like this. It was at 200 for the X-T2. For the V1 before, the X-T3, I try the extend ISO, but I prefer the native uh, ISO. And uh, yeah. It's an advantage if you, if I go to my uh, ah, panel is just there. When I can go in the catalog, yes. This one, for example, was from a D8. Yeah, we have time for one more. Oh, I like this. So okay. We have time for one more, and then I'll answer the questions. And just a reminder if you have a question, put it in the questions and answer. If you have a, a comment, put that in the chat. So again, if you have questions, put it in the questions and answers, and we'll get to those open ones real quick. All right. Okay, for this one, it was from uh, DA10. But you know, the issue was this uh, area, you know, because as you know, in the blue hour, because it's a blue hour picture, uh, the highlights here on here is not, it's really tricky to expose, you know? So I underexpose this picture, but look, with this accent, I'm just like this. Uh, with the light, I do not use the light. I will show you something because I will use a mode. Yeah, yes, I will choose a custom lot that I did on the computer, uh, not uh, at the golden and hour. Lookup table. Lookup table. Colors. So I did uh, the blue hour for this one. Oops. You have a slight difference, but I will bring up the amount a little bit like this, up. a little bit of a saturation, and look up before, after you have already we have already done with the things, and I will go to the light tool. I will open the shadow, just a few things like this. Okay, wow, uh, and I will go to the color. On the yellow hue, you know, because it's too yellowish, you know, I read down the saturation. Yes, the saturation. You will see. Normally. On the orange, maybe. Yes, it's the orange. <laughs> it's the orange things. So it's okay, like this. So I will put these things. 
It's very nice. Just like this. Now we go to the super contrast. Oops. Very light. Up before, after. And I um, love that each of our tools had that toggle switch to where we can at least see the changes that each of those are adding um, to the. Oh, image. yeah. For I the wish I super contrast. I wish I had that when I'm cooking. If I put too much seasoning, <laughs> I'm kind of host. So for the super contrast, I will show you the before and the after. For the mood tool, the before and the after. Oh, before, after. Nice. Yeah, that Lutz, you did, you, yeah, I was wondering where you were heading with that. And I really liked how you how you brought that lookup table in. And uh, a few people were asking, are we going to cover LUTs and how and what they are and how to create them? Um, a lookup table is not something you, you can create inside Luminar. Um, you'll need a program you know, such as Photoshop, for example, that's a graphics program that changes all that. Or you could download some LUTs generators. And there's yeah. a ton of free LUTs. Uh, we have I'll them on our marketplace. In Luminar later um, be using an external tool. So, uh, so it's important. Yeah. So, so it's important that we, we, when when you're using these LUTs, look at the built-in ones that we have, and see what it does to the image and how it changes the mood. Like this here, I I love how it did that. It it totally changed the mood of that entire image. Yeah, and it's uh, I I like doing some LUTs. I did uh, three packs of LUTs for Lumina. For free, uh, free uh, it's for free. It was for my, because originally I, I have a YouTube channel, but in French, for my French YouTube community, I offer some packs, etc. you know. And, uh, but it's available on my, on my website if everybody, if everybody wants to have a lot, so it's free, in fact. In fact. Uh, for this one, uh, what I'm going to do now is to, now to, it's to open the light a little bit too, the exposure. No, I have some dust sensor, so oops, I will use the waste tool. And I have a lot of sense, a lot of uh, things just there too. What I can do, it's a uh, lazy things I know, but uh, okay. no, that's good. look at that. You, you took the 16 by nine, a little bit like this, oops. And you know, all this, uh, this, this dust you know, on the picture, bye bye. Oops. <laughs> so, that is absolutely gorgeous. And well, hey, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I will go to the vignette to fin finalize these things. Okay. Nice. Favor. A little bit of inner light. And. Maybe just like this, and this is the before and the after. Look at that, beautiful. Awesome. Well, hey, thank uh, you so much for sharing that with us. Um, how, could you stop sharing your screen for a moment? Okay, I yep. will remove that. Uh, there you go. Great. Now, where can we find out more about you? Or where can people see some of your work or your tutorials oh yes on my uh, website uh, i can show you uh, the website Oops. and while you're doing that i'm going to answer a question um uh, it's 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 fair i can show you quickly uh this one look uh, look at this. Is this one, in fact? You have the packs just there, and I have all the bunch of packs for free uh, for Luminar Four. I have uh, some packs of looks. Uh, uh, I have uh, bum, 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 bum. 
uh, there are some free uh, sky sky uh, sky replacement you know uh, some LUTs just there and uh, if uh, somewhere you have something interesting uh, I have a, a luminosity panel for Luminar 4 if you want to use with uh, Luminar 4 on Luminar AI it's possible and I did a small things too with a uh, with Aurora HDR2. You know, you can uh, combine the luminosity mask with uh, Aurora 2. It's working too. There we go. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time. And I love, love those seascape images. Thanks a lot. <laughs>